Molecular vibrations are all about the covalent bonds that help to form a molecular, a molecular structure. So we've got a, a drawing of a, a, a little sketch of the structure of a water molecule here, of a H2O molecule. Now to help us understand molecular vibration, it can be helpful for us to, uh, to compare these covalent bonds, which are in fact just pairs of electrons, uh, which in which uh, one electron has been contributed here from the hydrogen atom, and another electron has been contributed by the oxygen atom, and so the uh, the pair of electrons is being shared by uh, by both of these atoms. Now, if we if we sort of compare this covalent bond to a spring, like so, it can help us understand this idea of molecular vibration a little bit better. So. If we view the covalent bonds as the covalent bonds here as springs, a little bit like this, then we can sort of better picture the ways in which our our, our H2O molecule can change shape or vibrate. So when we talk about molecular vibration, it's the stretching or the bending or the changing shape of a of of the molecule that we're looking at. So for example, if we have this this water molecule. Perhaps it could vibrate so that it looks maybe a little bit straighter like this. Or it could go the other way and be further out like that. So these spring these these covalent bonds, these spring like covalent bonds are just changing changing length and changing direction. And so we can also have, you know, the same shape but bigger. Or, on the other hand, uh, nice and small like it is. So these are all the ways, these are all the sort of molecular vibration uh, energy levels that the water molecule can take. There's, there's, there's lots of others, but these are just, gives you, give you a, these give you a general idea of what we mean when we talk about molecular vibration. These are the different types of things. This is how we can sort of uh, visualize the, the vibration of a molecule. So we're talking about a molecule's bonds bending, stretching. These are the words that we use to describe the molecular vibration. Now each of these, oh, and another one is possibly scissoring. Now each of these different vibrational uh, sort of modes of the water molecule, each of these vibrational modes that I've drawn here, carry with them different energies. So this say that this is our, our regular straightforward uh, basic ground state water molecule. Then uh, these four these four different uh, sketches that I've drawn here show the water molecule at an ex in an excited state. So because the molecule is vibrating, it's bending, stretching or scissoring, it's excited and it's gained energy. Now each of these each of these different sketches here has a different energy. We say that it occupies a different vibrational energy level. And so, when the the when we, we can say that the, uh, the 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 energy level has changed when something called the dipole moment has changed. Whenever the whenever this thing called the dipole moment of a molecule changes then we know that the energy of the molecule has changed. Now, dipole moment, the specifics of the idea of dipole moment aren't important right now. We just need to know that it uh, it gives a measure of direction and size of charge separation. So it's all about charge separation. So in our in our ground state water molecule, we've got this uh, this oxygen this oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, and there's going to be one positive end and one negative end. There's going to be a slight dipole in this molecule as a result of the differing attractions for electrons that of oxygen and hydrogen. Now, if we change the dipole moment, if we change the shape or the vibrational energy level of this molecule such that this this thing this dipole moment thing changes. So if the direction of the charge separation changes, or the size of the charge separation changes, then we're going to get a changed dipole moment and a changed energy level. Now these varying energy levels that can be uh, that can be reached are very specific. They are what we call 
discrete. So the same way that in an atom when our electrons are excited they can only be excited to specific energy levels given by their electron shells the electron can only be excited an electron can only be in the first shell there or the second shell or the third shell it can't be anywhere in between it's the same for molecular vibration if we have a water molecule in the uh, in the ground state down here then if we it may be able to occupy another energy level here let's say if it gets a bit stretched like this, so it gets a bit longer. And then it can move up here and maybe it'll change shape slightly so it'll be a bit wider. But the point is that all these different all these different vibrational modes of this molecule, all these different ways that the molecule can vibrate, uh, are, are only at specific energy levels. Uh, by vibrating, this, this water molecule can reach an energy level here and it can reach one here and here. But it can't reach energy levels in between, so it's kind of like the, it's very similar uh, to the way that the electron is excited in this uh, this atom over here. So the reason that that becomes important, the reason that that these specific energies that the molecule can take on become important, is when we analyse how we excite and vibrate a molecule like this. So how does a molecule start vibrating? Well. We know that in the example of the atoms getting excited, if we bombard an atom with light or with electromagnetic radiation, then it will be excited. So if we bombard it with a, uh, a wave of electromagnetic radiation, it will get excited. It's the same for this vibration. So what we're looking at is infrared radiation. Infrared radiation. Uh, is on the lower end, or the, on the weaker, less energetic end of the spectrum, or side of the spectrum, compared to visible light. It carries less energy than visible light, and thus doesn't carry enough energy to excite electrons. However, it does carry enough energy to uh, to vibrate molecules like this. So infrared uh, radiation is the energy that is is sort of carries the right amount of energy, uh, the right the right general range of energy to vibrate and excite an entire molecule like this. And so, because we can only uh, a molecule can only be excited to very specific vibrational energy levels, it can't just be excited by any energy, it can only reach certain energy levels, this means that only specific wavelengths of infrared radiation will be able to excite a given molecule. So, if we wanted to excite our H2O molecule from the ground state to this first excited state, which I've drawn here, then only one specific wavelength of infrared radiation will be capable of doing that. The one specific wavelength that carries uh, that carries this energy that is equal to the difference in energy between the ground state and this first energy level. And so that is the only wavelength that will be able to excite this H2O molecule to that first energy level. And so this, uh, this water molecule can therefore absorb that wavelength. And so we can analyze, we'll go through how we can analyze the wavelengths that are absorbed by a molecule a bit later on. But for now, we just need to know that the same way that only specific uh, colors or, or frequencies of light could excite electrons in an atom, only specific wavelengths of infrared radiation can vibrate a molecule. So if we want to help us understand molecular vibration a little more, we'll have a look at an example. And so in this example, we want to we've got a bit of a Venn diagram here, and we're going to compare molecular vibration to atomic excitation. So the first one, the first that, uh, that I've that I've pointed out quite here clearly here is that uh, both deal with discrete energies. This now discrete here doesn't mean subtle; it means means specific and finite. So it's not a continuous range of energy levels, but only specific discrete energy levels that can be reached uh, by both a molecule and an atom. Now, the way a way in which these two these two uh, forms of excitation differ is in the type of light that can cause them. So here, molecular vibration can be caused by infrared light, whereas atomic excitation is caused by visible and UV light. But of course infrared and visible and UV light are all forms of 
electromagnetic radiation. So both these forms of excitation are due to electromagnetic radiation. However, the type of electromagnetic radiation that is used in each case is here uh, infrared on this side and visible in UV light on this side. So it's slightly different forms of EMR. Now, what is it that is actually excited? What is it that's actually happening? Well, we're just getting vibrations here. What's happening in molecular vibration is, as you can guess it, vibrations. That is the change that's occurring. Here, it's electron energy shells. That is what is changing in atomic excitation. So if we abbreviate energy to capital E, electron E shells are what is changing. So again, if we look at what exactly we are exciting here, we're exciting the entire molecule Whereas in atomic excitation, we're, we're, we're exciting only the atom, or really, if we want to be specific, we're exciting only the electron. So atomic excitation and molecular vibration are really quite similar things. They're both very, they're both discrete. They both deal with the absorption of electromagnetic radiation. However, they they simply occur in slightly different situations. Uh, molecular vibration it looks at the excitation of a, of an entire molecule as a whole, not just one atom. And it deals with the vibrations of that molecule rather than any uh, electron shells. It deals with how this, how this molecule can change shape and bend, stretch and scissor, thus changing its energy level. Molecular vibration is also, as a result uh, of, it is slightly different to atomic excitation in that it requires less energy and thus infrared radiation is what is needed to create molecular vibration. So that's, that's a bit of an introduction to this idea of molecular vibration. And uh, we can use this to analyze, identify both qualitatively and quantitatively uh, different substances.